After playing a ton during both weekends of the beta, I want to break down my thoughts on how I think Black Ops 6 is looking ahead of its launch at the end of October. This will be split into three chapters, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Oh. Oh, what the f Yeah. You're, you're fucking trolling me. Let's get into it. We'll start off with the movement, and while it's nothing groundbreaking, it does introduce a slightly new learning curve and therefore implementing a skill gap. The good players that can utilize the movement to its fullest will definitely be at an advantage. It's something we haven't really had in movement since Modern Warfare 2019 and Warzone 1 with slide cancelling. And when you get into that sort of flow state with the movement, it feels amazing. Chaining together slides, running and dives in any direction, it really feels like one of the smoothest Call of Duties we might have ever had. Of course, it won't be for everyone, and there are definitely some drawbacks with the new system, but overall, it's a very positive change for Modern Warfare 3, and a million times better than what we had with Modern Warfare 2. The aim assist nerf when you're up close to about 5 meters with an enemy, I think it's actually a really good move, and again goes back to implementing a skill gap. It will definitely help PC players compete up close, because if previously, if you've ever tried keyboard and mouse, trying to go one on one up close with a controller player, you lose that fight 99 times out of 100. The gunplay so far seems pretty great to me, there's no real visual recoil, it feels good when you get a kill which is a big thing for me. Whether it's a headshot or not, that sound and the impact you get feels great. There's no big screen shake, no big muzzle smoke or flash, and the idle sway, etc. It all feels pretty spot on. And the weapon leveling during the second week in particular was massively improved. During the early access part of the beta, it felt like it would take at least 5 or 10 hours just to get to level 10 on a weapon. And seeing as they've gone back to having weapon levels up to level 40, up to 50, it just felt way too long. And maybe it's just a combination of them adding some double XP towards the end of the weekend, or the fact they actually decreased the XP requirement to level your guns. I'm not entirely sure, but it felt a lot better during the second weekend, as you were able to actually try out attachments and different builds. And speaking of the weapon builds, the almost redesigned attachment system is great. The fact there are basically no cons to them now, meaning you can create a weapon that is all speed or has zero recoil, for example, and not be negatively impacted for doing so, should in theory make for a more diverse meta. And obviously there will still be the meta builds, like the all is but this should be a step in the right direction and overall I just think the game is fun which of course is the most important part right obviously all your stats and progress will restart for the full launch of the game so maybe that's a factor where I'm not worried about how fast I'm leveling up or what my KD is really but for someone who puts hundreds of hours reaching into the thousands a year playing Call of Duty I think Black Ops 6 is a lot of fun whether you're playing multiplayer exclusively or warzone or even zombies which we haven't really got a full look at yet i think it's going to be a good year now moving on to the bad chapter if you haven't already please do hit the like button and comment down below i'd love to hear your thoughts on black ops 6 did you enjoy the beta did you hate it whatever it may be let me know and while you're there hit the subscribe button it helps me out massively so on to the bad, this may be somewhat controversial, but I'm not a big lover of the maps. And Treyarch have already come out and said these size of maps, the medium size they call them, are what we can expect from the other maps that we didn't get to play during the beta. Now I hate shipment size maps, the strike maps are just not for me personally, they are just too chaotic. And granted, yes they are good in some aspects for just leveling and doing the camera grind, which is fine if that's all you want to use multiplayer for. But for me, I like some of the bigger maps with a proper three lane system and just overall a bit more spread out. And I'm not saying I want another derail or wasteland size maps. I just want something a bit bigger, like a high rise or maybe even a Karachi that we've had in the past from Modern Warfare 3. Because if we go to my next point, that ties directly into having these small maps, which is the spawns. I'm sure many of you have seen the clips from Babylon in particular of the terrible spawn systems that we had on that map of whole teams continuously spawning in front of someone with an LMG and within 30 seconds they have a nuke. It's really quite amazing that this still happens and while I'm sure they'll fix this to some extent when the full game releases or throughout the year, you will always get this on small brain rot maps like shipment and just adding spawn protection isn't really an answer for me. And here we have the ugly part of my review. The connection, the constant freezing while getting into a gunfight, and the constant packet bursts have to go. I don't know if it's due to the fact they've forced Texas streaming now, which is a massive mistake, or just more people played the beta than expected, and I'm sure it will get ironed out in time over the course of the year, but there's nothing more frustrating than dying over and over again because of bad server connection. Which can also tie into the next point, 
with the desync when shooting enemies, which could just be the fact that servers aren't good enough for Omni movement, which could obviously cause massive problems when it comes to Warzone, as they still only use 20 hertz servers compared to the 60 we get in multiplayer. But the amount of times I could easily pit five, six, seven, sometimes even eight shots it felt like into someone, only for them to kill me in four in the same time frame. And this was significantly worse for me during week two of the beta. But again, hopefully this is something they can easily iron out and fix for the full release. Footstep audio, of course, again, is another big issue in a Call of Duty game, shock horror. Although during week two, sometimes I could easily pinpoint enemy footsteps, the other 75% of the time, someone could sprint up some metal stairs behind me and raw dog me in a corner with no audio whatsoever. They did tweet out beforehand that they had made some adjustments and improved the audio, but it obviously doesn't seem to be the case so much, as we shouldn't have to rely on teammates running ninja just to be able to hear enemy footsteps. And the last two points really don't need too much talking them at all, but I have to fit them in here, and that's the anti-cheat needs to be better. You can't have people in the early access part of the beta, and then of course in the open beta just openly cheating. Just improve the anti-cheat, it's that simple. Some may still slip through, but that is a problem that seems to play COD more than any other game. And of course the second point is skill-based matchmaking. They've addressed it in their white paper early this year and it's not going anywhere. And while I do see some of the good sides to it, the bad definitely outweighs it. And it's just a shame that if you're a really good player and your friends aren't that great, you just can't play with them at all because it just pit you in the blender and they'll want to hop off after one or two games. And well, that's pretty much everything I enjoyed with the Black Ops 6 beta and everything that I think is wrong and needs to be worked on and improved for the full release. Overall, it definitely felt a bit more polished than any beta we've had in the past. And of course, no launch of Call of Duty ever goes smoothly. But I am somewhat confident Black Ops 6 will launch in a very good state. And like I said before, I actually had fun playing multiplayer. Even when I reached the level cap, I still found myself playing because I was having fun, which is a pretty big positive. As always, I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one.